Shawnee County has opened new fronts in the war on weeds, and there are a few changes you might want to know about to help them out. John Landon is the director of the county's noxious weeds department. He is here with some of your new, they're not toys, they are tools. <laughs> they are tools. Uh, that you have employed yes. here. But yes. noxious weeds are kind of a, a thing. You know, we all know weeds are bad. We don't mm -hmm. want them in our gardens or in our lawns, but when does something become noxious and what do we need to know about that? It becomes noxious when it's invasive and, and, and can destroy or harm uh, cattle or, or any kind of food supply. Noxious is obnoxious. Noxious is obnoxious, <laughs> yes. Are there things that we might see in our yard that we definitely need to get rid of because you maintain a list, mm -hmm. correct? And are yes. these things that we are required to remove from our yards and not keep there? There or are. fields or pastures? Yeah, KDA actually has a list uh, of 14 weeds on that list that are that you have to remove from, from your yard, pasture, any, any ground that you maintain. What are some of the common ones? Common ones in Shawnee County's field bindweed. You'll see that a lot in town. Uh, little viney plant, white flowers, sometimes pink growing. Uh, you'll see them along curbs, uh, the medians here locally in town. Uh, you may run into some Johnson grass occasionally uh, along some of the roadside ditches. Uh, the other common ones are musk thistle and Cerisa lespedeza is probably our, our worst weed that we have in Shawnee County. Which is fun to say. It, it's fun to say, <laughs> and, and I've heard it a hundred different ways. And the lespedeza is one of them that you've been working to get rid of, and that's what you have on the table. You employed drones. Yes, yes. So this is a smaller one. What does this part of the equation do? So this little drone here, it, it does the surveys, it does all of our, our mapping, and so we can take pictures about 200 feet in the air and identify weeds with that drone. And then once we collect that data, has it all mapped out, then we can send that map over to the big drone that then will execute the spray and force. And we have some video of this. We were able to go along here about a month yes. ago and see you guys in action. That's the big one. That that's would the not big one. fit on the coffee table Correct. comfortably. <laughs> so you send that, that's the second one you send up, but first and we're gonna show the pictures that, that this little guy captures. That's your Lespedeza that you uh -huh. were in search of. And then this little guy went up and got these pictures. Yeah, so it takes it takes a series of five pictures as it takes them. Uh, the picture on the left was at the actual plant, uh, just a color picture of the plant. Mm -hmm. The one on the right is just a, it, it's, Picture it like an infrared type deal. It, it helps identify that plant. It also does uh, several colors of black and white pictures that uh, bindweed you can pick up really well when it's black and white because the, the flower is white on it. Uh, not, it doesn't do so well in the colored uh, image of it. So, you know, they're just, they're great tools that it helps us. We've uh, taken on a little project. We're, we're looking at Shawnee County, uh, Lake Shawnee. Mm -hmm. uh, they have, uh, water milfoil in Lake Shawnee, and so we're mapping that currently for an upcoming project next year. And that one, I imagine you have to be a little bit careful of because what kinds of chemicals and things can you really use? Yeah, so they make a lot of aquatic herbicides anymore that okay. are safe for the environment. And so, uh, you know, this one is gonna be done with the drone as well. And so we're gonna be putting some product down. Uh, we're gonna go a couple different ways. I don't know exactly which one yet until we get the surveys done, but we're looking at an aquatic triclopyr or a sonar AS for that application. You know, there might be people who still think of drones as a novelty, um, but it really has grown. The technology and the use has grown. Why is this a good investment and not just a toy? To well, you? so what makes this great for our department is we have all these areas that we can just, they're inaccessible for us. When you look at the riprap areas along the creek, uh, you know, some of the right of way has big rock bluffs. And, and if we can take the applicator out of that area and, and prevent him from being injured, uh, you know, that's, that's great. The, the other big, huge benefit for us is, you know, when you think about applying herbicides, you think of the applicator down there in that zone where all that herbicide's being sprayed. And so, you know, he'll come out of there blue half the time with the dye that we mm -hmm. use, we call it smurfed out. And so now <laughs> that, that applicator is nowhere in that area of that application now. And so when you think about long-term health and cancer and things like that, you've, you've eliminated that out of the, out of the Program, so. Well, it's a fascinating approach, and I appreciate you coming in and showing us a little bit more about how it works. John, well, great. Thank you so for much. having me. Thank you. An upcoming concert brings music from the attic to the stage. We'll explain next.